Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the IWC Spitfire Doppel Chronograph Reference 3713. You can see this 42mm steel Retropunk chronograph and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch with additional accessories included, high resolution images and naturally complete pricing details. On my wrist six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This 42 millimeter watch is delightfully wearable. Now 42 millimeters includes the round measurement of the case, so not including the crown or any of the three pushers, it's quite reasonable in its size compared to some of the modern IWC Pilots references, and it's even more wearable when you take the lug to lug span and the thickness into account. Now the thickness at face value seems insurmountable to a sleeve, 17 millimeters, but wait, look at the step to the flank of the case and the dramatic double step to that bezel. It's actually pretty easy to get this watch underneath a cuff or a sleeve. Only the tightest formal cuffs are going to find themselves incompatible with this watch thanks to its distinctive flanking shape. Now from lug to lug, 52 millimeters is quite reasonable in this modern day and age, and it's made more so by two factors. One is the ease with which this matte black alligator leather strap simply pulls straight down around a tighter wrist. Second, I want to bring attention to the curvature of the lugs, which thrust down dramatically after they exit the flank of the case, so the watch sort of drapes itself over the wrist. I'll show it a good effect right here, but you can see how it does curve around the wrist. You can see next to my thumb how it's wrapping itself and doing the same on the opposite flank. So even if your wrist is smaller than mine, say down to 14 centimeters in circumference, you're going to be able to wear this watch with great proportion, style, and security. Now it does have impressive heft on the wrist. It has a fairly deep case profile with a solid screwed on case back, so you do get that satisfying feel of a hefty luxury watch. I know that many people simply don't dig the feel of forged carbon, resin composites, titanium, or ceramic, and if you want want that feel of a traditionally heavy luxury watch in steel, this watch delivers. Now the strap itself is a handsome but simple piece. It's a matte black rectangular scale monotone stitch alligator leather. So you can see that very traditional appearance, because it isn't a shiny scale, it doesn't draw attention away from the centerpiece, which is the watch itself. But it is mildly bolstered as it approaches the lugs for a little bit more swell and body. And it's paired with a wonderfully adjustable and beautifully beveled IWC pin buckle for quick on-the-fly changes to sizing. Now, the case itself is beautiful and beautifully subtle because it makes effective use of contrasting finish. The first finish that I want to draw attention to is the beautiful mirrored chamfer that sort of diminishes as it approaches the center of the case. There's a little bit of a bevel along the flank of the lug that has a high polished surface and it's straddled by satin on the flanks of the case and satin on the hoods of the lugs. Now if you look at the bezel you'll see likewise the upper step has been polished, a thin sliver, almost like a silver halo. It frames this beautiful Spitfire style dial. The finish of this watch is simple but powerful. And the same goes for the dial itself. Now you can see the characteristics of the Spitfire dials to good effect here. First, a metallic finish. And the watch has a beautiful silver sunburst radiating out from center with a circular or concentric circular brushed grain to the hour track itself. Now the hour track, again in the Spitfire tradition, features applied Arabic numerals, not printed. So there's an extra level of depth and reflectivity that comes with this dial. Finally, there's the multiple planes of the dial. Starting with the outer dial and stepping down to the center, it's continued by the countersunk sub-registers, as well as the beautifully stepped apertures for the day and the date. Now the watch internally is powered by what could rightly be considered an IWC in-house caliber, the 79230. Now it's a 29 joule split second, I'll split the second to demonstrate, chronograph caliber, automatic winding with a 44 hour power reserve. It's based on the Valjoux 7750, but massively changed by IWC to incorporate their own split second mechanism, which is integrated, not modular, to the chronograph. It was invented by Richard Hapring, now of his namesake manufacturer out of Austria, when he was a lead complications designer with IWC in the early 90s. And it was a breakthrough because it took the previously 
unobtainable split-second complication, something that was generally only built as a bespoke commission at high horology houses, and made it durable enough and affordable enough to put in watches costing thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands. Now, the watch maintains all of the underlying strengths of the 7750 caliber, including hacking seconds, so when you pull the crown, you stop the balance, allowing precise synchronization, and a quick set system, which serves both the day and the date for rapid correction should the watch run down or encounter a month of irregular length. With 60, 6 ATM water resistance, it's good for splash, it's good for getting caught out in the rain, but I wouldn't take it diving. This is an aviator's watch and it deserves to be high and dry and handsome on your wrist this summer. You can see this IWC Spitfire double chronograph and buy it on our website.